In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Will Christ have mercy? Lord, have mercy. Have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God. Son of the Father. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever, amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. When Moses came to the people, and related all the words and ordinances of the Lord, they all answered with one voice, we will do everything that the Lord has told us. Moses then wrote down all the words of the Lord and rising early the next day, he erected at the foot of the mountain an altar and 12 pillars for the 12 tribes of Israel. Then having sent certain young men of the Israelites to offer holocausts and sacrifice young bulls as peace offerings to the Lord, Moses took half of the blood and put it in large bowls. The other half he splashed on the altar. Taking the book of the covenant, he read it aloud to the people who answered, all that the Lord has said, we will heed and do. Then he took the blood and sprinkled it on the people saying, This is the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with all these words of his. The word of the Lord. I will take the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will take the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. How shall I make a return to the Lord for all the good he has done for me? The cup of salvation I will take up, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. I will take the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. Precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. I am your servant, the son of your handmaid. You have loosed my bonds. I will take the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. To you will I offer sacrifice of thanksgiving, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. My vows to the Lord I will pay 
in the presence of all his people. I will take the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, when Christ came as high priest of the good things that have come to be, passing through the greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made by hands, that is, not belonging to this creation, he entered once for all into the sanctuary, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, thus obtaining eternal redemption. For if the blood of goats and bulls and the sprinkling of a heifer's ashes can sanctify those who are defiled so that their flesh is cleansed, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself unblemished to God, cleanse our consciences from dead works to worship the living God? For this reason, he is mediator of a new covenant since a death has taken place for deliverance from transgressions under the first covenant, those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance. The word of the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. I am the living bread that came down from heaven, says the Lord. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, Jesus' disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? He sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man will meet you, carrying a jar of water. Follow him. Wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, The teacher says, Where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large upper room furnished and ready. Make the preparations for us there. The disciples then went off, entered the city, and found it just as he told them. And they prepared the Passover. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them and said, Take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup gave thanks, and gave it to them, and they all drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many. Amen, I say to you, I shall not drink again the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. The Gospel of the Lord. My brothers and sisters, on this Sunday after Trinity Sunday, we celebrate the solemnity of the most holy body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The superlative terms indicate to us how important this feast day is. This feast day commemorates one of the essential mysteries of our faith and one of probably the most essential gift that our Lord gave to us, the gift of the Holy Eucharist. So our gospel today presents once again the Last Supper. We well know the scene. Jesus gathered his disciples around him. Then he took bread, 
and said over that bread, this is my body. Over the chalice of wine, he said, this is the cup of my blood. At those very words, Jesus was miraculously giving to his apostles his whole being, body, blood, soul, and divinity. With the same efficacious words by which our Lord could say to a cripple, rise and walk, order the blind man, see, Lazarus who is in the tomb, come out, or to the storm, be calm, or multiply loaves and fishes, or to demons who possess someone, come out of the man, our Lord, with the same efficacious words, could transform in this miraculous, mysterious way, bread and wine, to share himself with us. While the appearances, like the shape, smell, taste, and so on, do not change, the what it is does. The apostles, in hearing these words, I don't think were really shocked. Before this, in chapter 6 of John's Gospel, Jesus gave the long bread of life discourse, and he said, I am the living bread come down from heaven. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood will have everlasting life, and I'll raise him up on the last day. That teaching they kept in their heart, and now that teaching has been fulfilled. The apostles, too, understood the broader context. We hear of how this was during the time of the Feast of Passover. For the Jewish peoples, the Passover was a living event. Yes, chronologically, it happened about 1,200 years before our Lord. But for them, when they celebrated Passover, they were living it. It was part of their life. It was a timeless event. They remembered how by the blood of the Passover lamb, they had been freed from Egypt and then led by Moses to the promised land. The covenant had been renewed. Also, St. Paul in our second passage from Hebrews reminds us too that they would have remembered Yom Kippur, another important Jewish feast day. This is the feast day where the high priest would slaughter a bull as well as two goats. He would take the blood then in a bull and enter into the temple, passing through the veil into the Holy of Holies and take some of that blood and pour it on the Ark of the Covenant. For the Jewish people, blood was our life source. So when we sinned, sin entered the blood. Sin separates us from God. So the way to heal, to bridge that chasm caused by sin, so that we could become at one with God, they offered the blood sacrifice. Hence, Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, to make us at one with God. So the apostles understood all this. But the Last Supper is not an isolated event. The next day, Jesus goes to the cross. He, as priest, offers himself as the perfect sacrifice for our sins. Only he, true God who became true man, could possibly take on the burden of our sins and offer a sacrifice that transcends time. He offered the sacrifice not only for the sins of the past, his time, for our very time. Jesus offers himself as the true Lamb of God. By those, by his shedding of blood, sin is washed away. The covenant is made new. Really, a perfect new covenant. This, though, does not end simply in death. Unlike the Passover lamb, unlike the goat and bull of Yom Kippur, on Easter, Jesus rose from the dead. Jesus conquered not just sin, but also suffering and death, giving us the hope of everlasting life. 
My brothers and sisters, put it all together. Jesus said to the apostles, do this in remembrance of me. This is why we have the Mass. The Mass represents in an ever-living way the Last Supper, the sacrifice of our Lord, the resurrection. One miraculous event. We truly believe that at Mass, bread and wine, at the words of consecration, through the ministry of a priest, become transubstantiated into the body, blood, soul, and divinity of our Lord. Jesus miraculously, under this appearance now of bread and wine, shares with us who he is. Keep in mind, too, it takes a priest. Jesus ordained his apostles. Since then, bishops, like the apostles, have ordained priests. Yesterday, we had the ordination of two men, one from our own parish. Deacon James Joseph is now Father James Joseph. They've been empowered now with that sacred character so that they can do what Jesus does, continues to do. They're the ones now that at those very words, Jesus speaks through them. So pray for them. And we're very blessed as a diocese that we have so many vocations. We're very blessed that we can staff our parishes. When I talk to other priests around the country, and the seminarians will attest to this, sometimes they don't have enough priests. They don't, or a priest may have multiple parishes. We have priests more than one usually in every parish. We're blessed because we've also, as a diocese, since 1974, when we were founded, separating from Richmond, always a faithful diocese. We've always done what Jesus asked us to do. At times we've been called conservative, we've been called traditional and so on. Well, we've got the vocations to prove it all. We aren't hurting, thank God, for that because we have been faithful. Now the challenge for us is this. Do you believe it? There's the key. Is the Holy Eucharist important for you? Is it what Jesus said it is? Are priests important for you? Is this church important for you, this Catholic church? Because what we do here, you aren't going to find down the street, let's say Restoration or at the Baptist Church, the Lutheran Church or anything else. They've got their own thing going on here. We carry on what Jesus gave to the apostles. Now I could say, do some homework and offer some and find some proofs because it's important to continue to refresh, to nourish, affirm our faith. So today, go to chapter six of St. John's Gospel and read the Bread of Life course, dis read the Bread of Life discourse. Take the words of our Lord to heart. They're his words. Not make-believe, they're his words, he meant what he said. Also, maybe just Google Blessed Carlo Acutis or just Eucharistic miracles. Blessed Carlo Acutis, who died just as a teenager, age 16, was sort of like this little genius for websites, and he created a website all about Eucharistic miracles. You may remember a couple of years ago, we had the posters. Back then, we were in the parish hall. This church was getting renovated. Look at some of those, especially the ones of recent times where they've done scientific analysis, which shows this is human body and blood living. So, two things. But also, just ponder that for all the people who don't believe, why is it evil people do? Something that's always disturbed me as a priest, even when I was younger, newly ordained, because there were incidents of this, is when I would hear how Satanists would try to break into a tabernacle and steal the Eucharist. 
it happened in Georgetown, or that some would pretend to come to communion but walk out with the sacred host and then use that to desecrate at their black mass. Tonight, in our area, there will be those who gather at 3 a.m., sort of the inverse of 3 p.m. when Jesus died on the cross, and they will have what they call their black mass. They worship Satan, the prince of darkness, the father of lies. Part of that will be they kill animals, blood sacrifice. They also will take the Eucharist and desecrate it. So my brothers and sisters, if evil people can get it, we should too. Think of that. So if you need some affirmation, which I think is good for all of us, read chapter 6, St. John's Gospel, go to the Eucharistic Miracles website, and think about what evil knows. Just like the possessed people could look at Jesus and say, you are the Son of God, the Holy One, when the scribes and Pharisees didn't get it, the demons did. Think of those things, and then ask our Lord, Lord, give me the grace to believe. May God bless you. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Dear Lord Jesus, you said that where two or more are gathered in your name, that you'd be in their midst and hear their prayers. With this confidence, we offer these petitions. For all of our church leaders, especially Pope Francis, Bishop Burbage, and our parish priests, that they will preach the gospel with courage and conviction, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our nation, that together we will promote the common good of all, safeguard the sanctity of marriage and the family, and defend the rights to life and to religious freedom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For justice and peace among nations, especially Ukraine and the Middle East, and for those who serve in our law enforcement, military, diplomatic, and intelligence services to make peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Christians who face persecution and genocide, especially in communist and Islamic countries, that the Holy Spirit will keep them strong in the faith, and for all non-believers, that the Holy Spirit will move them to faith in our divine Savior, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our for the Israeli hostages and all the innocent victims of war, terrorism, and violence, we pray to the Lord. For Father James Joseph and Father Sean Nypaver, ordained priests this Saturday, that they will be generous and faithful in their service to the Lord and his church, 
We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the acceptance of vocations to the priesthood and religious life, that young men and women from our own families will heed Christ's call and offer their lives to him who gave his life for us. And for our parish seminarians, Gabriel Godet, Michael Gibbons, John Anthony Buono, and Andrew Garcia. And for Sister Monica Baptiste Whalen and Sister Abigail Therese Jones, novices for the Dominican Sisters in Nashville, and Joanna Shaw, postulant for the Carmelites in Port Tobacco, Maryland, we pray to the Lord. Lord. For the sick and homebound, especially Father Pinizzato, Alice Paxton, Nuala McNamara, and John Tuey, and for our deceased, especially Ed Bonin, we pray to the Lord. For Joanna so- Sawamura, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. For our own personal intentions, which we offer in the quiet of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear all our prayers, even those prayers held within our hearts, and to grant them in accord with thy divine will. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In calling upon the prayers of our Blessed Mother, we pray. Hail Hail Mary, Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and and blessed blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Amen. Our second collection today is for the Retired Priest Fund. Thank you for your generosity. we've received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. Praise the Lord in his name. Our good and lost holy. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery and the offerings we here present through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For at the Last Supper, with his apostles, establishing for the ages to come the saving memorial of the cross, he offered himself to you 
as the unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise. Nourishing your faithful by the sacred mystery, you make them holy so that the human race, bounded by one world, may be enlightened by one faith and united in one bond of charity. And so we approach this table of this wondrous sacrament so that bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we with all the host of angels cry out, and without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, 
especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Agnes and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Michael our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed.
As our second collection is being taken up, just a few announcements. Our Poor Box collection this weekend is for the Little Sisters of the Poor in Washington. Bishop Burbage invites everyone to the 50th anniversary of the diocese celebration on June 8th, so next Saturday, at the Warrenton Fairgrounds. All the details are in the bulletin. There is no cost, but registration is required so adequate refreshments can be provided. They'll have mass, they'll have rides, entertainment, fireworks, should be fun. This Sunday, our Father James Joseph will offer his first Mass at 11 a.m. After Mass, we'll have our Corpus Christi procession, concluding with benediction, and then all are invited to a reception immediately afterwards in the parish hall. So please keep him in your prayers, and he's going to be assigned to St. Leo's Parish in Fairfax at the end of June. June 16th marks Father's Day, a novena of masses is being offered for all fathers living and deceased. So if you would like to have your father remembered, please complete an envelope available at the entrance tables and return it in the collection basket or at the parish office. This is a wonderful way to remember our fathers. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life, which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the other evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the root of souls, amen.